we got our next flip. As promised, I'm gonna show it to you. Now we just got it, we haven't started work yet. We've started moving some tools and stuff in, uh, but the condition it's in is the condition it was in when we bought it. Uh, it's in pretty good shape. It was previously flipped in 2016. Uh, it kind of needs some dressing up a bit, I'll say, some refreshing to bring it to 2020 standards. So we're going to clean it up a, a bit. We're going to put some new flooring in it. Uh, a lot of the exterior paint needs to be repainted. So I'm going to have fun scraping paint off old wood and redoing that. Um, but let me give you a tour. It's a three bed, one bath. 1,040 square feet, so it's a small three-bedroom house. Uh, but honestly, I don't know where they found the square footage, but they managed to make some decent-sized rooms in this little house. The living room's small, but it's big enough to put a sectional or a, maybe a couple love seats, something like that. Uh, room for a dining table. The kitchen is surprisingly big for a house that was built in 1959 at this size. Usually older entry-level houses like this had terrible little kitchens, but this one is actually pretty good. Uh, you'll see that. If I didn't already say, it was built in 1959. If I did, I repeated myself like I usually do, so just ignore that. Uh, but let me give you a tour and show you what the place is like. And as I walk through, I'll point out the things that we're thinking of changing just to kind of dress it up, bring it up to modern standards. So let's go on a little tour, shall we? All right, so here's the front door. I'm gonna pan around here and show you what the living room's like. There's a double window to the right there on the front wall. And this is the living room in its entirety. There's a window here to the left that looks out into the carport. They put a uh, pretty nice ceiling fan in it, whoever flipped this last. And it's kind of cool because it has, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's got a remote control. I've never owned a ceiling fan with a remote control, so that's kind of fun. I have no idea how to actually operate it, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to figure that out. But as you can see, it's got this uh, lovely brown carpet, and I'm saying that sarcastically because I'm not a fan of it. At the entry, they put some sheet vinyl. That's like a tan color. I'm uh, not so much a fan of that either. I'd say that most of the finishes they put in this house are like apartment grade, basically. Um, the carpet, sheet vinyl, stuff like that. The only upgrade I would say they put in is the granite countertops in the kitchen. I'll show you that. Everywhere that there's this lovely brown shag carpet, I'd like to put a wood look type flooring. I don't know if we want to go with uh, laminate wood look or vinyl plank that's a wood look. It just depends on what the subfloor is like and you know what type of flooring we can put on top of that. This is an older house so the subfloor may not be the smoothest and most level. So let me pan around the living room here. So it's, it's a small living room. It's probably about 16 feet across on the front wall there by, oh, I don't know, maybe 13 feet on this wall. So it's, you know, it's a small living room, but it's, it's doable. You can put your furniture in here. And then through this opening here is your dining room. And it's an actual dining room rather than a dining area. Uh, the flooring again is sheet vinyl, just like the sheet vinyl that they put in the at the entry there at the front door. I'd like to run whatever wood look floor we use into the dining area, just to upgrade the look, make it look a little little nicer, a little fancier. All of the walls throughout the whole house are this light gray. I'm personally not a fan of gray, but a lot of people are. It's very trending right now. The paint is in great shape, so we're gonna leave the gray paint alone. And there's no sense in uh, spending money on stuff that's in good shape and still in trend. To the right of the dining here, you've got the kitchen. You'll have to excuse all of our tools and junk that we have out already. But this, you know, like I was saying, this is actually a 
pretty good size for a kitchen built in 1959. It's a little awkward the way it's laid out, which is pretty typical. Uh, but it's got decent counter space. Let me walk through the other kitchen doorway here. You can see it's got standard white appliances, nothing to get too excited about. Mom and I are not a fan of the appliances. They're very basic. Like I said, basically the last flipper put apartment grade finishes in the house. So we're not crazy about that. Uh, we're trying to decide what we want to do about that. The, the, all the appliances are only four years old since the house was flipped in 2016. So it seems a shame to throw out perfectly good appliances. Maybe we'll donate them or try to sell them and recoup a little bit of our money having to buy new stainless appliances. Uh, the cabinets are all new from 2016. And the countertops are granite, as I mentioned. Let me put this remote down, I'm still carrying that. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the granite. We're not changing it. It's, you know, a nice upgraded finish, but I personally don't really care for the granite. I guess it's kind of fancy and upscale looking, but it's just not my cup of tea. Is the best way I can put it. And part of my issue with it is that, as I just showed you, it's quite gray looking. And I don't know if it looks that way on video, but it's very kind of cream off white color with gray and black in it. But then if you look over here, and yes, it is the same granite, just a different cut of the slab that they used. It's a lot more pinkish gray color. And I really hate that. I don't like that, but maybe someone else will like that. And I suspect that's why they picked the floor that they picked because we'll come on in. Sorry about that. I got interrupted by mom walking in the door. Uh, <laughs> but I was saying the floor here, it's very kind of tan peachy color. And I think that's because whoever picked out the finishes saw this same kind of peachy tan color in the granite, so they went with that to match. So the floor matches this one slab, but every other slab of granite in the kitchen is much more gray looking. So I find that very irritating. Normally, if you, if you're, when you talk with a granite fabricator and you explain to them what you're looking for and you pick out your slab, they they'll let you say what section of the slab that you want so you don't end up with mismatched granite colors like this. Uh, you know, I'm making a big deal about it. Others might not care. I don't know. In the kitchen, I'd like to do a tile look floor that's a little bit brighter and more modern. Um, I'm actually thinking about perhaps using the same white marble vinyl tile. Uh, that we used in the last flip that was just a really crisp, clean, sophisticated look. Uh, and it's waterproof, so that's great. So I'm thinking we might use that here too or something that looks similar to that. We'll see. I don't know how that's going to look with the granite countertops. I don't know. It might clash with it. So we'll see. We're still running ideas through our heads on that. And whatever we use in here, we'll also run that in the uh, bathroom. So it's all cohesive and looks nice. I think the previous previous flipper cut out this pass-through opening here, but someone didn't take into consideration that the range back <laughs> would be sticking up, and so they cut the opening too low. So we're racking our brains trying to figure out what we can do to remedy that. It's really unsightly. It looks very unprofessional. You could see from the living room, the back of the oven shows. That's that was not done correctly. Someone goofed up on that. So we're gonna we're gonna have to do something about that. We're thinking of basically removing the trim and building the wall up higher here. So the pass through will still be here, but the wall will just be higher up to to hide this silliness there. So anyway, let's continue through. To the right in the living room is the hallway that leads you down to the bedrooms and the bathroom. The HVAC closet is right here. 
Again, more lovely brown carpet. It's throughout the, most of the house, all the bedrooms and the hallway, as you can see. And that's the bathroom right there. But before we go in there, I want to show you to the right of the bathroom, there is a linen closet, a little linen closet. And there's actually another one in the bathroom that I'll show you in a second. But let's check out the bathroom first. So they put a cute little frame mirror here and a standard kind of uh, cottage style vanity. So that's all gonna stay. It's in good shape and it's cute. The same peachy tan color sheet vinyl. And then they put in a new tub and they tiled the shower here. And I really like the tile that they chose. It's just, I love this little accent that they, they did. I think that's really cute. Standard kind of stainless nickel, whatever, kind of shower head. And then the ceiling. Why am I showing you the ceiling? Because they did tongue and groove wood. I don't know why they did that. I think it looks nice. It's just unusual. Maybe there was some old water damage or something. And that was their solution for fixing that. It works, I guess. You've got a nice, nice size little window there. Let some natural light in. Turn around, look the other way. And then you've got a second linen closet here. You can never have too much storage space in a house, especially a little one like this. So that's really nice. There's a digital thermostat. It's pretty fancy. I've never interacted with one like this before, but uh, I've been having fun trying to figure it out. I'm not that techy of a person, so <laughs> it's been interesting. Anyway, to the right here, you've got the first bedroom, which I believe is the smallest bedroom. It's probably about, mm, I don't know, maybe eight feet by 10 feet. So it's a small bedroom. It'd be good for a little home office or for a child's bedroom. Single window there. And then all of the closets and all of the bedrooms seem to be the exact same size. They're about four feet wide and you're standard two feet deep with your typical shelf and closet rod. Nothing special there, but sufficient. Continuing down to the end of the hall is the second bedroom, which I think is the second biggest bedroom. And this bedroom, yeah, I would say this is a little bit bigger. It's a corner bedroom, so it has two win windows, which is nice. This bedroom is probably about 9 by 11, I'll say, so it's, it's an okay size. It works. You could fit a queen bed. Closet. Same four foot wide closet. And then, finally, the third bedroom, which I'm calling the master bedroom because it's the largest. And it's probably about 12 by 12 or 12 by 13, perhaps. And it's on the back corner of the house, so you've got two windows again, which isn't always nice. And again, for the third time, you've got your four feet wide by two feet deep closet. Now let's walk down to the opposite end of the house. So that's basically the whole house. Uh, it's a, like I said, a small house, but it's very cute and then overall it's in good shape. I forgot to point out the ceilings here, if you'll be able to see it, see it or not. The texture, they put the, uh, I think it's called a knockdown texture ceiling. Yeah, this is a knockdown texture, which is what people are doing nowadays. It's one of the, the finishes that people are doing. And then in your dining here, there is a side door. There's no back door in this house. A lot of these little 1950s houses did not have back doors. A lot of times they had side doors like this. But the side door goes out to a covered staircase area here. To the left. Whoa, I gotta watch my step. I'm tripping here. It's your carport. To the right, leads to the backyard. There we go. We've got a cute little backyard. It's 
So here's where we just came out on the side of the house. That's the side door. You can see the carport, the car's in there. And you walk out the back here. In typical Florida house fashion, uh, you've got an exterior, well, I'm saying exterior, but it's, it's an indoor laundry room, but it's detached from the house itself. You have to walk outside. Not ideal by modern standards, but very typical of Florida houses. So let's take a look inside. I'll warn you, it's unfinished. It's basically a storage room uh, with laundry hookups in it. So let's check this out. But you can see it's not pretty, but it's certainly functional. A dry place to keep your tools, ladder, random junk that you don't want to keep in the house. There is a washer and dryer here. We're debating on if we want to leave it or not. The pair does work. We tested it out, but as you can see, it's in very rough shape from being outside. As is the water heater, it's still functional, but from being outside since 2008, when it was replaced, it's gotten very rusty. You can see it's just a place to do your laundry. <laughs> it's not a place you're gonna hang out, that's for sure. And it's kind of interesting, I was looking at this. Originally, I think this, these walls were not here. This was a covered patio area, because if you look, all of these walls are newer panels but the roof structure is old and original. And you can see a brick column here, that's original brick. So I suspect this was a covered patio without the walls here. And the other reason I think that is because you'll notice there's a door jam here. So I suspect there was a, a wall here with a door going into what was essentially a little tiny laundry room, utility room, uh, and the rest of this was patio. At some point, some decided storage was more important to them than a covered outdoor sitting area, so they closed it in. All right, folks, so that's a wrap for today's video. It just dawned on me, I was talking about that white marble look tile floor. If you've got no clue what I'm talking about, please go ahead and watch the other video uh, that will explain to you what I'm talking about and you'll get to see what our last flip looked like too and what we're capable of and what our tastes are like. With that said, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate those thumbs up. It lets me know what I'm doing good, what I'm not doing so well. Um, comment below. I love hearing from my viewers. Maybe you have some insight or some ideas into what you think might look nice in this house. I'd love to read your comments. And yes, I do read the comments. So don't be shy. <laughs>